welcome back to Harley's Worms, and today we're going to talk about the top worst foods for your worm bin, and this is probably the most important part about vermicomposting and raising worms to have good results and to not have your worms escaping the bin and flying out and running all over who knows where. Uh, so we'll start it out with number one and probably the worst food you can put in your worm bin would be grease. <laughs> and grease is going to go in there and the worms are going to absolutely avoid it. You'll see worms almost on the opposite side of the bin and I've never put grease. I have put a little bit of greasy foods but I knew better off the jump save the bacon grease for cooking or your canola oil or anything like that and then the next one is going to be oils like avocado oil you might think that's pretty healthy it's made from the avocado seed but then again the worm can't really digest the oils and same thing with butter you know whether it's the expensive uh ghee butter you know even that is not going to do good because the worms they're kind of vegetarians for real and they like eating the stuff that they can easily get into and break down whereas butter you know it's not going to work out good and it's probably going to stink really bad too and so we'll move on to cabbages and this was the absolute biggest mistake I ever did. I composted like a whole cabbage. And I was like, well, it's like a vegetable, kind of like lettuce, you know. And it was the most raunchy smelling <laughs> vegetable I ever put in there. And the worms didn't even eat it. And it was in there for like a month. So save the cabbage for your compost pile or your pre-compost pile. You'll be in a lot better shape. And you won't have some funky stuff going on in your worm bin and the next one is going to be meat whether it's hot dogs or grass-fed grass-finished beef or you just won't want to put that in the worm bin because there's you know the red wigglers like I said they're going to eat the vegetables first anyway and on top of that they're going to eat the vegetables that are already starting to break down over a new vegetable so then when you put your uh, your cheeseburger in there it's just gonna sit to the side again they're not gonna touch it it's gonna get real funky not quite as bad as the cabbage but and then I don't I don't know they just don't eat it so keep that out of there and especially if you're vermicomposting indoors meat is not gonna be your friend so feed the meat to something else and speaking of cheeseburgers we got cheese up next and you know there's a lot of different types of cheeses and worms probably would eat you know some type of cheese out there there's like 10,000 different cheeses but uh, you know that being said uh, high quality cheese would probably break down faster over something like imitation cheese like the really really cheap cheese that's going to be the absolute worst cheese for your worm bin. But, you know, there again, don't put any cheese in it. Even nacho cheese, and that's cheese that isn't yours. And it's definitely cheese that the worm won't eat. So, we'll move on to yogurt. And yogurt's like fermented milk. And we're kind of fermenting dirt. So, now you got two fermented things going in together. And I've never tried yogurt. I kind of... I eat the yogurt before it goes bad. It's too good, but uh, you know, you put some old chunky, <laughs> old chunky, mildewed blue yogurt in there. It's gonna gonna be the same deal with the grease. <laughs> so keep the yogurt and the milk products out of the compost pile. And a fun fact for you: this word on the street, if you take the old soured milk and yogurt and put it in your sink or septic. It'll help your uh, septic to boost the uh, the function of the septic system. 
So there's your tip of the day. And we'll move on to spicy peppers. My favorite food. And spicy peppers are my first love in gardening. And even before gardening, I would always have to have some fresh jalapenos with my meal. Kind of led into all this. I needed a good supply of peppers. So we got the dirt and the worms to get the peppers. And it's going great so far. And my favorite peppers is going to be the Carolina Reaper, which is now the second spiciest pepper in the world. And I have no interest in trying the spiciest. The Carolina is plenty for me. And the Serranos and Jalapenos, absolutely delicious. And anyway, the reason why you don't want to put them into the worm bin is because the capsaicin levels or the, the hotness of the pepper or the spiciness of the pepper gets in the worm bin and it kind of acts like something acidic and they stay away from it and don't eat it. So save the spicy peppers for yourself and now we're moving on to fish and you might think uh, you know I caught a fish I don't want to eat it I got it home you know what do we do with the fish now so well you already messed up a few times if, if you don't want to eat it and you brought it home but anyway we'll just say you got some fish from the store and it's expired you want to throw it in the compost bin but there again same thing with the meat the fish is going to sit in there and the worms aren't going to eat it and it's going to smell probably even worse than the cheeseburger scenario so again save the fish for something else and keep it out of the worm bin maybe in the compost pile and bury it deep anyway move on to fizzy drinks so anything you crack a cold one on, it goes, ksh, ksh. <laughs> you don't want to put that into the worm bin because, you know, it's not just that liquid. There's also other stuff in the beverage that would make it unsatisfactory for your worm bin. So keep that in the sink. And I wouldn't even put it in the garden. Dump it down the sink, throw it in the trash. Maybe recycle it would be even better since we are, you know, probably at the cutting edge of recycling with worm composting. So, anyway, salt. Now, there is kind of like cheese, about a thousand different salts, some better than others. And let's say you got the top of the line, most expensive salt you can buy, super healthy, all that good stuff. The salt you would not want to put into the worm bin because the worms don't like salty foods like us. They like it straight out uh, natural. So we don't want to be interfering with that, putting salty foods on, and it probably burns their skin like the spicy peppers. So we will now move on to coffee grounds, and everybody says coffee grounds are amazing for the worm bin. And I do believe they are, and you should never throw away your coffee grounds. But I have, you know, got the, the free coffee grounds from uh, coffee makers and, you know, put five big bags into, you know, five or ten pounds of worms. And then the coffee grinds just mold up on the top, and they don't really eat it, so... Definitely keep that in moderation, and as long as, you know, you're drinking a couple cups of coffee a day, no matter the size of the worm bin, it will probably be fine. Just don't overdo it. But there again, coffee grinds are actually really good for the worm bin. But I just thought I should mention, don't, don't overdo it. And that could go with anything, really. You don't want to do too much of one thing. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So... And here's another controversial one would be peanut shells. And you would think, you know, if I can eat something with a shell, that'll be great for my worm bin. And I thought the same thing. But the peanut shells, something about them, they'll just sit in the worm bin for, I mean, I've been vermicomposting now for three years. 
and I still have peanut shells that when I harvest my castings, those peanut shells come down in it. So, and they all they do is kind of mess up the harvesting process. So, keep the peanut shells out or to a minimum, and maybe keep those in the compost pile that doesn't then go to the worm bin. Be my advice. And now we will get to some honorable mentions on rough stuff to throw into the worm bin that you shouldn't do. And that would be stuff like old clothes. You wouldn't want to put no old uh, blue jeans in there. That would last forever. Don't do it. Plus, you don't really know what's in the clothes because you didn't make them. Too much cardboard. You know, like I said, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. You throw... You know, you do 100% cardboard in your worm bin. You know, I've never tried it, never will, but it's going to be bad news, I'm telling you now. And we'll touch on pickles. You know, anything that's in vinegar, it's going to be pretty acidic. It's going to take forever to put in there, but not the end of the world if you did it. And processed foods, so anything super refined or, you know, a bunch of weird stuff in it, don't put it in the worm bin. Also, stickers and tape on fruits and cardboard, especially the avocado pills. They, they're kind of hidden sometimes. You know, you cut it in half. The sticker's on the bottom. You don't see it. So look over your avocados and bananas good with those unnecessary stickers. And also manure. Uh, a lot of people tell you put some, uh, you know, rabbit manure or horse manure or stuff like that. And that's probably fine if you're the one that's raising the rabbits or the horses. But, you know, if you go and buy horse manure from some dude you don't know, you hadn't seen their farm, then that's where you run into problems because you don't know how that stuff was raised or taken care of. And now you could, you know, mess up your whole worm operation by, you know, getting something from somebody else. So be real cautious about that. And uh, anyway... Not saying manure is bad for your worm bin or nothing. It's just I personally don't think it's a good thing. And but you know there again, animal manure is good for vegetables. So you know, take it for what you will. Make your own decisions. Um, but anyway, we're feeding our worms uh, some wheatgrass pads here that I grew in my prior videos. If you want to check those out. And we started them from seed, and now here we are putting them into the worm bin. And once you get them in the bin, if you just throw the wheatgrass pad on top, they will eventually get to it. But the worms really like the uh, worm chow that I make, and if you put the worm chow on something, they're going to go for it. So... We hit it with the worm chow all over to get to entice them up into the wheatgrass pad and they love to wiggle around through the roots and then it's a great nitrogen source for the worms and the results of wheatgrass pad versus no wheatgrass pad in the worm bins is pretty amazing so next week we'll check back in on the wheatgrass pads and see how they're doing and i left a few in the tray to see how it does because it has holes in it and then they work up through the holes i think they like that because i know they like the cardboard with the little grooves getting in there and wiggling around so but um we also threw a little oyster shell in for some grit that's uh been milled down to a fine powder so the oyster shell is grit for their gizzard and that helps them process the food. So everything should be set up for next week to have some crazy good worm videos. And also I'm putting it in dry and I'm not wetting the wheatgrass pad. And the reason for that is my worm bin is pretty wet and we're going to be harvesting our casting soon. So we're going to keep it dry to make it easier to sift. And so that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I made you laugh a little bit. I hope you're further along on your worm journey. And I hope you have a great and amazing week.
Thank you. See you next time. Legends for staying to the end. Thank you.